Noah, being an 18-year-old student, gets offered the job to watch over the local media co-founder's house, who had a very public divorce with his ex-actress wife. Rumors spread publicly that he cheated on her, which leads to a swarm of angry fans rushing to his house one by one, confronting and threatening him. This night is no exception, with Noah being all alone in the large house, not knowing what awaits him. Hi folks, I'm R, your narrator, and welcome to Fears to Fathom, episode 3, a story that has seemingly based on true events. If you have any game or video suggestions, make sure to send them to me on my Twitter or subreddit. Keep in mind that this video will have spoilers, and with that in mind, let's begin. Based on a true story, a 28-year-old Noah reminisces on a horrifying near-death experience he had, sharing it with the world, hoping his mistakes and story would be a lesson for others so they won't have to experience such a horrible, traumatizing event. The story starts when Noah was only 18 years old. His father was a realtor who almost always became friends with his clients. The father decides to offer Noah a weekend job, asking him to watch over one of his clients' houses when they go away for a few days. The client was a successful man who worked as a COO at a local media company, which meant many people knew him. Noah being offered $100 for this weekend job decides to accept the offer as a little bit of extra money is always good. He also decides to do his schoolwork there as he would spend majority of the time just sitting around. During the drive Noah's father taking him to the client's house, Noah falls asleep having a surreal dream being trapped in a never-ending laundromat where he gets confronted by a strange man asking for bleach. Noah soon wakes up by the father telling him that they have arrived at the house. The father informs Noah where to find the spare key, being under a fake rock, telling Noah to take care of himself before driving off. Observing the large house in a nice neighborhood, Noah gets a message from his girlfriend Evelyn, who talks about a person known as Kara, whom Noah feels guilty about, someone who wasn't necessarily nice to him. Of course, we don't know who Kara is as of yet, but we're gonna learn the hard way who she truly was. Entering the house, Noah gets a text message from an unknown number, introducing himself as Roy Carson, the owner of the house. He explained how he wouldn't ask for anyone to watch over the house if it wasn't for Zeke, the dog. So essentially, Noah was only asked to do the job for taking care of the dog while Roy is away. Which makes sense, as houses typically don't need someone taking care of them, and in any case of emergency, the neighbors could contact the owner, or installing security cameras or alarms could inform the owner of any emergencies or break-ins. Talking about security measures, Roy texts Noah to check his computer as his security system has been down lately, not knowing exactly why. After Noah checks the computer, he installs an antivirus which gets the system up and running again, which makes Roy so happy that he promises to give Noah a big tip when he returns. After feeding Zeke some dog food, Roy instructs Noah to get the groceries before it gets too dark, which is somewhat bizarre as it's nighttime and the grocery shopping could definitely wait until Roy got back home himself. It's something that didn't seem to be in the contract of watching over the house. So far, Noah has done a lot more than just watching the house, fixing the computer, feeding the dog and looking after it, which wasn't mentioned before, and now going out to get groceries late at night. Having had decided to watch a humorous dark toned show known as Cooking with Jeffrey, with Evelyn watching at the same time while texting together, Noah gets annoyed yet goes out to get the groceries. After using Roy's son's bike to get to the local store, Noah encounters two of his friends who tell him that Kara was just here, revealing Kara was Noah's ex-girlfriend. Not much is explained why Noah felt bad for Kara, but it indicates in a way that they had a rocky relationship. Turner, the friend Noah encounters, showcases really vulgar and disrespectful mannerism, which Noah explains to himself that he never vibed with him as he found him to be childish and disrespectful. After getting all the items on the list, Noah heads back to Roy's house when he receives a few texts from a friend who instructs him to check Roy's very public divorce results on Google. Checking this information on Google, Noah reads in fear how the publicized divorce of Roy and his wife caused many fans send death threats to Roy. Roy being the co-founder of a media company, marrying a former actress known as Alyssa Brown, causes his life to become the interest of public who can easily access information about his personal life. Due to many diehard fans of Alyssa, naturally, they took her side in the divorce, supporting her, while many forms of the support being aggression and threatening 
behavior towards the ex-husband, Roy. The hostility towards the husband started after rumors of him being unfaithful and committing infidelity to Alyssa, which made her fans wanting to enforce mob justice and punish the husband, even though nothing was confirmed and even Alyssa didn't talk about it. This mob justice mentality went so far as the fans of Alyssa even knocking on Roy's door, confronting him about the divorce and his supposed infidelity. This portrays the insanity of some fans who go so far as committing crimes and threatening someone whom they perceive as evil only because a fabricated image of a person they worship or follow religiously has been supposedly hurt by them. In this case, only rumors have indicated Roy was unfaithful, yet this wouldn't stop the crazed fans to go to his house, confronting him with a self-righteous attitude. Contemplating on the horrifying results Noah could face tonight by the crazed fans, he suddenly hears the doorbell ringing, which makes him jump, especially after reading this terrible news about Roy's house being a target of insane fans. Scared and worried about who might be behind the door, he asks who it is before opening, when the man behind the door explains he's just a pizza delivery man. As he opens the door, explaining he didn't order any pizza, the pizza delivery confirms it's the right address, which makes Noah happily accept the unexpected yet very welcome pizza. Noah shortly sits on the couch and starts munching on the pizza when he receives a text from Roy confirming he was the one who ordered the pizza for him. This checks out the delivery was intentional and not a strange coincidence. Just as Noah is unwinding and enjoying his pizza, he hears yet more doorbells, which he goes to and asks who it is. Despite asking loudly and clearly, no one responds, concerning Noah greatly, checking the cameras and peeking through the blinds, seeing a woman standing behind the door. Soon the woman leaves, with Noah opening the door, finding a bouquet of flowers, thinking it must be a fan, whether for Alyssa or even possibly Roy. He quickly closes the door, being vigilant when he receives personal texts from an unknown number. Despite the strange events, he decides to ignore them, believing the texts were intended for someone else, contacting the wrong number, and the woman leaving flowers being someone he doesn't have to worry about. Noah decides to start his schoolwork when, after a few hours of hard work, the power goes out while he hears Zeke barking outside relentlessly. Going outside to check the breaker, he notices the fuse being turned off, confused to how this could have happened, especially as Zeke started barking in a panic. As he turns the power back on, he reads more messages from the unknown number, which makes every effort possible to gaslight Noah and make him feel bad, being clear that it's from no other than Kara, Noah's ex-girlfriend. Noah believing Kara wouldn't do such a thing, being so horrible and clingy, he starts thinking all the recent incidents are related to his classmate, who is known for pulling really stupid pranks, especially as he told him about where he's staying tonight being at Roy's residence. He texts a friend of his, Andy, asking him to pass him Turner's contact details as he's been messing around. That's when Andy informs him Turner had been with him all night, which makes an already terrified Noah form new theories that all of this is due to his tiredness and paranoia and there's nothing to worry about. As Noah tries to rationalize the situation, he checks the cameras constantly for his peace of mind when he notices in horror the woman standing outside from before, actually walking inside the house, going room to room, exploring for what seems to be looking for Roy to deliver him the mob justice for the alleged cheating on his ex-wife. The slender woman in a short dress, something to wear on special occasions, starts calling for Noah, revealing she knows him personally. This woman, who is revealed to be Kara, somehow knowing Noah is in Roy's house, goes on saying how she missed them and wants things to be back to normal. Kara showing mental instability, being threatening and confrontational, expresses how she feels betrayed that Noah left her for Evelyn, when Noah explains that it's over between them and that she needs to leave. This adds fuel to the fire, making Kara become even more enraged, banging on the computer room's door, demanding Noah to come out so they can fix things. Naturally having the mentality that being threatening and confrontational like that to the point that someone gets scared, somehow is going to fix things. Noah threatens Kara with calling the police when Kara exhibits how she doesn't care, threatening Noah in return with killing both him and Evelyn. Just as Kara looks for Noah in the house, he takes his chance and runs for the door, managing to escape his crazed ex-girlfriend. 
As soon as he leaves, he calls for his father who contacts the police, but by the time they arrive, she is long gone from the house. Noma reveals that he met Kara from a dating site, someone who was three years older than him. Despite the age difference, he liked her, but two months into dating, Kara reveals that she does hard drugs. Despite Noah's efforts trying to help her, Kara gaslights him, saying that he's trying to change her, which leads to Noah breaking the relationship. This causes Kara to build a grudge against them, never truly moving on, having her ego shattered. The police as a result go to her place of residence and find out that she has been heavily under the influence of drugs and alcohol. And reviewing the footage from the security cameras, they observe how she broke in and picked up a kitchen knife, truly having bad intentions that night, wanting to kill Noah. This explains the woman shrouded in darkness standing in front of the door was no other than Kara who left a bouquet of flowers for him to express her twisted way of affections for him. She was the one who turned off the power and messed around in the house. Noah, despite trying really hard to help her in the past, still felt guilty for leaving care, especially as she was addicted and needed serious help, but of course, Noah couldn't do any more in reality and staying with her only pulled him deeper into the toxic swamp she had created. This explains why Noah still talked about her with Evelyn and felt bad for not being able to help her. By the end, it's clear how unstable she truly was, going so far as wanting to kill Noah. And that's it for this episode of Fears to Fathom, which was quite interesting. If you folks enjoyed it as much as I did, make sure to stay tuned by hitting on the subscribe button and the notification bell. It's been your host, Star, and I will see you on the next one. Take care.